definitely tell it's our change. <laughs> Glad you're here. Uh, really excited. Uh, but before we get started, there is a light bluish green Taurus outside with your light still on. Uh -oh. Light bluish green Taurus with your light still on. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. This morning, uh, the sermon is titled Expect to be Offended. <laughs> So, some of you are like, oh, my life's wrong too, Pastor. I got to do it. That can sound great. I guess everybody's life's wrong, huh? <laughs> Lord knows. Okay. But let's start by asking this question this morning Are you different? Yes. I don't know if, I mean, you, you really need to look around. If you think you're the same, look again. But let's talk about what different means. Some of us can say, yes, I'm extremely different from the norm of our culture. In fact, I believe if we took this church right here and we moved it to California, we would all be different. <laughs> It'd be uh, unique, if you will. And it might be that people would like us. Some of them might not like us. And so when we look at different, you have to actually look at and ask the question, what are we different from? Some of you can say, man, I'm different from my family. That's why they call you the black sheep of it. Some of you may say, man, I'm different in the way I think. I'm different in the way I feel. And sometimes different is viewed upon as bad. In fact, didn't it we fear what we do not know? That's right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if I have a little poodle that comes up to me, I don't fear it. <laughs> but if it's a pit bull, I have to find out if it's friend or foe. And here's the reason why I'm asking this question. Because I believe there's a lot of us that think, man, I'm different. But we really need to look at what God means when he wants us to be different. And sometimes when we find out what he wants us to change, we get offended. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. Look at these scriptures. First, let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 2. For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. Out of all the peoples on the face of the earth, the Lord has chosen you to be his treasured possession. Could you believe that this morning? Is it possible that you can truly believe that God said, I have chosen you as my person. You are my treasure. Sometimes that's hard for us because we will ask this question of God. Why would you want me? I'm, nobody likes me. I'm not the same. I mess up. I'm a failure. I'm all these different things. Why would you want me? And the Lord says, it doesn't matter. I've chosen you. I see you. Look at this next scripture. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. That you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Think about that this morning. Out of darkness into his wonderful light. Has anybody ever in your lifetime thought that you were in the light only to find out you're in the darkness? <laughs> no, what I think I'm doing is perfectly legit and good only to find out it's killing Look at this last one. Revelation chapter 18, 4. Then I heard another voice from heaven say, Come out of her, my people, so that you will not share in her sins, so that you will not receive any of her plagues. God is calling us out. You really need to understand that this morning. He is calling us out. Of where we are to become a part of who he is. Out of darkness, our way of thinking and doing things, into the light, 
his way of thinking and doing things. And sometimes when we have to make those transitions, we'll get offended. Just being honest. Notice this. It is critical to become different than the world. Hear me on this. It's critical. You cannot have the world and have God. It's an impossibility. You're lying to yourself if you are of the world and yet claim that you are Christian. That is a very unpopular statement. No, Pastor, you don't understand. The Lord hooks me up so that I can gain the world. It's not how it works here. I know that might be contrary to popular belief. But the Lord says, no, I'm taking you out of the world. Now follow me here. It seems that our culture continues to recreate what Christianity is. If you're Christian, you'll think this way. You will do this. You will look like this. You will be like this. I want to be very clear this morning. To truly be a Christian is to be more like Christ than the culture. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. amen. That's right. Really, really think about that. So it's not like going into a room like this, finding out the temperature of the room, seeing how people talk and act, and fitting in. That does not make you Christian. What makes you Christian is when you get face to face with Jesus and he begins to do his work. And once again, sometimes you will get offended. This process of becoming different than the world can only be done from obedience and directed by God, not man. It's, it, it, I think God laughs at me and sometimes frustrated with me no. when I sit there and tell him, Lord, I'm going to impress you today. <laughs> Check this out. I'm going to help that lady across the street. And I grab that lady by the arm and she hits me with her purse. <laughs> and I say, get behind me, Satan. <laughs> Man, Lord, I really tried to do a good deed. The Lord says it's not about good deeds, it's about obedience. And sometimes my calling to you will offend you because I call you to be different, different than you're used to being. Amen. All of us can remember how we grew up. And, and hear me on this. I had a wonderful home. My mom and dad both loved Jesus and they loved me and my brother and they were very supportive and, and they disciplined us. I mean, this was back in spanking days, young people. Yeah. Yeah. Does anybody remember those days? Yeah. It, it, it was one of those where mom would spank me and then people in the grocery store would be like, you need me to get in on that? Yeah. <laughs> I'll never forget hiding in a clothes rack. <laughs> Anybody remember doing that one? Yeah. Watching mom panic. <laughs> Only for a lady to see mom panic while she's looking for clothes, see me in there, grabbing me by my arm till I'm lifted up. <laughs> Is this him? <laughs> my mom's like, yeah, I beat him. Boy, I got beat him. Oh. And I'm like, Is somebody gonna help me? Everybody's like, yeah, no. <laughs> That's good. I had a loving family. I had support. Now, follow me on this. I know that many of us in this room did not have that benefit. You didn't. And, man, you were given a, a hard deck of cards to grow up with. That things weren't as loving as caring. But hear me now. If you are here today, if you are breathing, you have the choice to be about your father's business, your real father's business. Yeah, that's right. And be changed. Many of us have experienced this where we said, I'm tired of being what I think I need to be. And we begin to follow Christ and he changes our lives to the point that where we even come from, people no longer recognize us. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever gone back home to share what God has done in your life only to not be encouraged, but discouraged? When they begin to tell you, don't even act holier than thou. 
We know who you really are. We know what you've done. In fact, we have every record of your wrongdoing. And you're going, but wait, I've been forgiven. I'm made new. I'm somebody different. And this is what the world will say. Yeah, we'll see. There's reality in that. Yeah, because when you look at me, I hope you don't see me. Let's hope you see him. Amen. Because I want to be more like Christ. <laughs> I love how it says this process can only be done from obedience and directed by God, not man. Man has been trying through all of time to be like God. We do that, don't we? Some of us actually try to rule our home like we're God. I have spoken. <laughs> it does not fly at my house, gentlemen. When I look at my wife and say, sandwich woman. I usually am bound and gagged and folded into the pantry. You want a sandwich? Get you one. We try to be like God. We try to think that our decisions are like God. We look at God and say, hold on. I will be just like you. I can do it. I'm no longer going to cuss. I'm no longer going to do this. I'm no longer going to get angry. I got this watch. I'll please you. And God says, good luck. And we try our best. Hear me on this. Our intentions are good. We want to be a better people. But we just can't do it on our own power. On our own ability. You can give it your best shot, but hear this, on our best day, where everything is perfect, we wake up in the morning, the coffee is brewed, it smells great, bluebirds come on our shoulder, Bambi's in our front yard, everywhere you go when you drive, it seems like Moses is parting traffic for you. Everything is wonderful. You're praising God all day and, and you get to the end of the night and the Holy Spirit is in your room and you're slain in the Spirit. Even on that day, you are in need of a Savior. Amen. You need Him. Let's look at this scripture today. John chapter 6, verses 41 through 70. John 6, 41 through 70. It says, at this, the Jews there began to grumble about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I came down from heaven? Jesus said, stop grumbling amongst yourselves. No one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws them in. And I will raise them up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard the Father and learned from Him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. Then the Jews around there begin to argue sharply among themselves. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? <clears throat> Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. 
This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. He said this while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. Listen to this part. On hearing his words, many of his own disciples said, this is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? Aware that his own disciples were grumbling about this, Jesus said to them, does this offend you? Then what if you see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? The Spirit gives life, the flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of the Spirit and life, yet there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe and who would betray him. He went on to say, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled him. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. Jesus turns to his 12 and says, do you want to leave too? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Amen. Then Jesus replied, have I not chosen you the twelve, yet one of you is the devil? He meant Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, who, though one of the twelve was later, to betray him. Notice he was talking to the Jews first, and he was trying to explain this to them. They could not quite get it. And let's be honest. Some of us hear this scripture, and that kind of is creepy, isn't it? Eat of my flesh, drink of my blood. That's like some cult stuff right there. It seems like once we say that, we're supposed to bring out the chickens and snakes, right? Don't worry, that doesn't happen here. That's the last Sunday of the month. Okay, that's a joke to all you visitors. We really don't. Anyway. He's talking to these Jews, and these Jews got offended. They could not understand how he could say, I am the bread of life. I came down from heaven, and you have to be a part of me. You have to eat of my flesh, or you will have no life. And that offended them. And here's why they got offended. First, the virgin birth. They had a hard time believing the virgin birth because they said, is this not Jesus? We know his dad and mom, Joseph and Mary. He is just a regular person. <clears throat> Who does he think we are that we should think he is the son of God that offended them? Some of us in this room right now, it's hard for us to believe in the virgin birth, right? Because it doesn't make sense to our reality. Well, I want to ask you this question. How has your reality helped you out so far? <laughs> Second thing. Their human reality was challenged. I am the bread of life that came down from heaven. How offensive is that? Let's try it out. Today at lunch, when you're around friends, say, yes, I came down from heaven. See if people, number one, don't laugh. See if you don't offend some people. It's hard to believe that he really came down from heaven. But once again, how's that reality helped us out so far? And then he goes into this, very truly, I tell you. Whenever Jesus says something like that, he's, it's usually a loose translation. It's Jesus saying, hey, this is what's up. Yeah. Very truly, I tell you. Unless you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you have no life in you. No, wait a second, Lord. I got a pretty good life. I got a great life. In fact, I don't need anything. If that was the case, then why are we a people who are still discontent with what we have today? Uh huh. We are always looking for the latest and greatest. Jesus himself looked at his disciples. And in verse 16 and 61, we see where they begin to get offended. Because they even said, this is a harsh teaching. Who can accept it? 
Let's see if it offends any of us today. The only way to the Father is through the Son. Amen. Period. Period. No, Pastor, you don't understand. I serve in three different groups. I give. I help over here. I do all these things. So I feel like I'm a pretty good person, so I'm probably getting into heaven. No one comes to the Father through the Son. Unless through the Son. And we're like, well, Pastor, honestly, how do we eat his flesh and drink his blood? We'll get to that here in a second. Here's a very offensive truth. Association with Jesus does not make you a follower of Jesus. Let that sink in, man. He had a bunch of followers. And everything was good. They were following Jesus. And guess what they were doing? They were watching Jesus do these amazing things. So they associated with Jesus. Jesus would go into a place where there were sick people. Touch them. They would heal. There were blind people. He would touch them. They would see. There were people that were crippled. He would touch them. They would walk again. He was performing miracle after miracle after miracle. Yeah. Who would not want to follow That's that? Right. Right. Oh, man, they're following it. And they're like, hey, man, you want to go to the movies? I don't have time because I'm following Jesus. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, they got to the point where Jesus is there. And the Jews begin to argue with Jesus. And Jesus throws out this truth that offends them all. You can follow me and be around me all you want. You can put the refuge sticker on your car. You can wear your Christian gear. You can even talk to Christian rhetoric. You can listen to every Christian radio station. Read every latest book on Christianity, especially the ones that help improve yourself. But if you don't eat his flesh or drink his blood, you have no life in you. It's a harsh truth to his own disciples are like, Jesus, what are you talking about? We've been following you. Yes, you have been following me, but you are not of me yet. If you become of me like I am in the Father, then like the Father is in me, I will be in you. Yeah. Here's the sad part. I'm really about to start stepping on some toes here. The worst thing in the world is those who claim Christianity but look just like the world. We wonder why Christianity suffers. Pastor Allen says it best. 90% of people who don't go to church don't go to church because they've been to church. Yeah, come on. They experience people that declare God but go around and curse their brother and sister. Yeah. They be, they're around people who will accept forgiveness but not extend forgiveness and call themselves a follower of Christ. People that serve so they can be seen and not serve so they can honor God. Yeah. On, Cannot be this way. We are not here to be a church. Can I get an amen? Yeah. In fact, let's just be honest with ourselves. If we all got together and said, hey, let's build the best church Lubbock, Texas has ever seen. You're not thinking about me as a pastor. I promise you that. You need somebody who's got hair. A better speaker. Somebody who, who, who has been trained in the theological understanding of, of the words of the Hebrew and Greek. And Man, I have a hard time reading pity. <laughs> then we can do this. Thanks a lot. Then, we can say once we find the right pastor, now we got to find the right people. Let me ask you this question: Would you pick yourself? Yeah. Yes. Follow me here. The Lord has brought you here. Yeah. The Lord has brought me here. And man, it's not about what we want to do as a church. It's about us surrendering as a church and saying, Lord, you do what you want to do with us. And I know this right now, the, the name Refuge has not just become something that, that we all sat together and went, man, that sounds like a really cool name. Refuge is something that it was been before Refuge even started, and it's exactly what it is. Everyone who is hurting, come on in. That's right. 
right. Man, we got donuts, coffee, and most importantly, we got love. That's right. The only thing we're not going to give you is judgment. Right. Now follow me here. But our truth might offend you. For people to come in and say, this is who I am and declare it. Man, leave your own identity outside that door. Come on, girl. Come in here and let God give you one. That's right. That's the one we're going to celebrate. Yeah. Amen. Because that's who we want to be. We want to be like him. And in order to do that, he's got to take us out of the world. And even his own disciples said, can't do that. I'm not going to follow you anymore. And they left. They left. And notice what Jesus did not do. Jesus did not say, wait, 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 wait. I didn't mean to offend you. Come on back. Let's work something out. No, Jesus went. That breaks my heart. Then he looks at his own 12. The ones that are left. And he says, do you guys want to leave too? Here's what's so beautiful about it. Where else are we going to go? Amen. We don't want anything different than you. And yes, it's uncomfortable. Sometimes we don't know where we're going. <laughs> Especially sometimes we don't know how we're going to eat. But we've seen you do some crazy things with bread and fish. <laughs> we don't know how we're going to exist. But man, every time we follow you, we feel something that's deeper than this life. Amen. Do you think that changes for us today? Do you think God is literally a two day a week thing? Some of you just one day a week. No, God is not of our culture. What if all of a sudden we said we're going to change church to Thursday night? Some of you are going to be like, yes. Yeah. Some of you are like, ooh. Got a lot of things going on. Pastors, a lot of uh, volunteer work I do. <laughs> <laughs> on Channel 11. <laughs> oh, even worse than that, when it's football season. What if we had church on Saturday? But here's my point. I get to totally cut my own legs off here. Saturday takes place. There's one thing I love about Saturday mornings, college game day. And I turn it on, and I'm getting excited because I got college football. Guess what? Tech's probably playing that day. And my dad gets me season tickets every year to, to go watch Tech, so I'm going to go watch Tech. We're going to go watch them live. It's going to be awesome. And I'm going to be in there, and, and they're going to be – the band's going to be ready to play, and they're going to be playing a fight song, and I'm going to be acting like a lunatic. And I'm going to be like, here we go. We're really going to try to win one this year. And, <laughs> Go out there and it's happening. And, and then the ref makes a bad call. And I feel it is my uh, responsibility and part of my fanhood that I need to let this ref know, okay, that the call he has given is not correct. And the Lord says, What are you doing? Lord, I'm being a fan. You're no longer a fan. You're me. Right. But Lord, did you see him blew that call? <laughs> and the Lord reminds me, it's just football. Yep. Right. How can you harbor up hatred on an individual? Which I'm telling you, I can do that. <laughs> He's offended me for making the wrong call against my team. If he makes a wrong call on the other team, I say praise God. <laughs> That's just the Lord moving. <laughs> and we do this and we wonder why. How many of us do this, Lord? I really need your help in doing what I want. When we should be saying, Lord, crucify what I want. And lead me in your way. So here's what a Christian football fan looks like. <laughs> hey, great try there, Ruff. Maybe you'll get the next one, but I care about you. <laughs> All the fans around you are like, dude, what is wrong with you? <laughs> He's giving it his best effort, guys. Let's, let's encourage him today. But that's how we're called to be. 
Christ first. Amen. Now let's really break this down. A key to following Jesus is verse 63. The spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words that Jesus spoke are full of the spirit and life. Here's the reason why they got offended. It didn't make sense to their flesh. But if they would hold on to the spirit of what God is saying, it would change their life. Pastor, I really am not going to eat flesh or drink blood. That's your reality trying to understand what Christ is asking of us. Jesus says, eat of my flesh. There are some of you people in here that would take a bite out of it. <laughs> Those of you who've been in the darkest of dark places, I'll do whatever it takes. Yeah. You want me to chomp your arm off, Jesus? I'll, 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 I'll chomp it up. Yeah. <laughs> Drink my blood. This is spirit. He is saying you have got to be of me. You've got to surrender who you are and adopt who I am in you. And I know once again, you go, but Pastor, how do I do this? I don't want to offend you, but let's take a look at these next two scriptures. Matthew chapter 22, verse 14. For many are invited, but few are chosen. I'm glad you're all here. You're all invited. Amen. A few of you will be chosen. Now here's the reason. What, immediately what we do in humanism is go, what do I got to do to perform for Jesus? I'm told that he chooses me. Uh, it ain't about him choosing you. It's about you choosing him. Follow me here that Jesus says, man, I give you myself. Freely give you. But it's up to you to accept it and be obedient. Will you truly follow me? And if you follow him, you will experience life and life to the fullest. Amen. Look at Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. That hurts. There's a lot of people, especially in our culture, that walk around declaring Jesus. But I'm here to tell you this. It's better for you not to declare Jesus, but to live Jesus. Yeah, that you don't have to speak it, but you have to live it. And that's who we need to be. And being a part of living it is no longer being of this world. <clears throat> now follow me here. I know there's cares in the world. There's responsibilities. I'm not talking about ignoring that. Nobody can go home today and say, Pastor Travis says we'll have to pay our bills. Because <laughs> that's a part of our reality and the Lord will provide. Next thing you know, the reality is you ain't got a place to live. <laughs> but to be different, this is the key on how to become different. First of all, chill out. Let Jesus say what he needs to say to you. Don't get offended at him because when he says things to you and he calls you on your stuff, it is for your benefit. When he calls me out on my, in, my own insecurities, it's for my benefit. It's not for him to, to just hurt me, but sometimes it does. When I feel like I'm doing the right thing only to find out I'm doing the wrong thing, that my motives are wrong. Don't get offended, but praise God that he's calling you on your stuff. Extremely important. Now here's how I believe, and I know for a fact, that you can eat of his flesh and drink of his blood. The obedience is this. Love God and then love others. I'm going to show you how this works. If you will love well. You hear us say this all the time. Love well. And it's not just a slogan. It's a way of being. It sure is. 
if you're not going to focus on self and you turn around and just focus on everyone and love them the way God loves you, I promise you, he begins to change you. I say this by experience. I was raised in Lubbock Church, and I'm not saying anything bad about Lubbock Church, but what my mind, how I viewed it, and I totally could have gotten it wrong, is that my job was to go out there and make converts for Jesus. So here I go with my Bible, and what I need to do is let everybody know they're going to hell. And then I say, do you know Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? A total stranger, I ask that. Do you know Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? And their response is usually, well, I can't do it because we're in church. It's not favorable. And I remember going to God and saying, how come they won't listen to me? How come they don't understand me, Lord? I'm trying to save them. And the Lord says, you can't. But I can. So, Lord, what must I do? Love them and be the life of Christ Amen. to them. Come on. Really? Yes. To go to your enemy and to extend grace before they ask it. Yeah. Even though you won't get the same response. To love them, I promise you, not only will it affect them, it will affect you. Yeah. It will begin to change you. Amen. Some of you in this room right now have a lot of heavy burden because you hold on to resentment and bitterness. And the Lord says, forgive them. And you're like, they don't deserve it. And God says, neither do you. You're like, but God ain't talking about me. <laughs> it's where we really do say, Lord, I'm going to forgive. Help me. Because in my flesh, I can't do it. Lord, help me. And a lot of times the Lord says, let's just say it out loud together. Lord, I forgive them. And your whole flesh goes, ooh, no. <laughs> say, no, no, no. I'm no longer listening to my flesh. The scripture just told me flesh counts for nothing, but spirit is everything. Amen. So, Lord, my spirit, I forgive them. Help my flesh line up to my spirit. Come on, amen. Many of us in this room, we try to be as holy as possible. Try to be the separated people that God has called us to be. I'm telling you this, love well, and he will change us. Can I get an amen? Amen. And here's the real offensive part. You ready? Between the Moses doors. Those are the sliding ones when you walk up. <laughs> you have the opportunity to love well and be about your father's business. Amen. The question will be, will you be obedient? And that goes for you two that are on Facebook. And I do want to say hi to Washington State, where Brett and Wendy Hines are. They wanted us to say hi to everybody. We got people in Kuwait, Colorado. We got people all over the place, man. You have a challenge to love well right where you are. Just because you're not here doesn't mean this isn't for you, too. It's for all of us. Because we are refuge. Right. Amen. Yeah. Let's stand together. Okay. We are also refuge. Come on. Father, we come to you this morning. <laughs> Lord, I thank you so much for this people. Oh, Father, what a blessing. It is to sit and hear your words. Father, that you're a God that walks with us. Lord, help us to eat of your flesh and drink of your blood. For Jesus, it's only through you that we are able to get to the Father. Because you're in the Father, the Father is in you, and now you are in us. And man, it's just so indescribable. But Father, our flesh cannot handle it. But Father, we are not offended. Because our spirit is being fed. Lord, help us to be like you. Lord, give us divine appointments this week where we may love well in all things that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone say, Amen. Amen. Go and love well. Yes, yes.